Alright guys, welcome back to another Duty Modern Rise video. So I've been thinking, you know, um, after every week a season ends and another season starts at the Battle Park, I, you know, do a, I guess, a season review, a meta review kind of sort of the video on what's been going on in Battle Park, what people have been using, what have, you know, people have not been using and stuff, just to, you know, give folks a general idea what the meta is kind of like at, uh, you know, at the start of the season. So, anyways, uh, let's let's go ahead and and check that out. So, for um, we're gonna go check out the trends because you know trend does collect data on the amount of Digimon used generally in in a season. So that would be helpful information for us. So, anyways, um, let's let's get into this then. So, uh, trends obviously they just show like the top what twenty um, used Digimon. So, if your Digimon's not on here probably not a lot of people are running them right so uh, that, that would be quite obvious and I think the the lowest they have is is a one percent uh, one percent so let's start from the top actually so Minerva Mon is still all the way up here uh, she's still absolutely dominating the arena at the moment just, just just because again she is absolutely just so powerful her passive decreases <laughs> targets all targets enemies defense by 20 percent and nullifies uh, freeze against herself which is nice uh, but it's mainly for the defense right so after you know after you decrease their defense by a decent amount then 420 percent damage um this at skill level 10 by the way uh, just like huge damage multipliers to three enemy targets and then also decrease their counter rate by 20 percent which is always nice as well and then 50 percent chance to inflict poison on three enemy targets so again she just does so much aoe damage with this first skill it's three targets right you know that's a decent amount of targets and with a really really great multiplier her sub skill is okay it's good for cleanup right you know pretty bad multiplier and it but but it hits everyone right so again minerva mon is still up here no surprise and uh, although you do have to note that her usage rate, even though she's still number one, her usage rate did drop a bit, uh, dropped what eight percent over here. So we could be seeing a bit of a decline in Minerva Mon, and just I guess tech uh, teams in general, because if, if you look at this list, a lot of tech kind of dropped, right? And Minerva Mon dropped a bit. Uh, Noble Pumpkin dropped a bit. Um, Sekumon dropped a lot. Mega Gargomon, right? So th that could be some wise mon. That would be your number one indicator of if Tex uh, dropped or not, right? So there's that. And moving on to Noble Pumpkin Mon. Noble Pumpkin Mon, again, super, super uh, strong uh, main skill. A high multiplier against two enemy targets. Increase all allies' tech by 20%, and then all incre uh, and increases all allies' power damage resistance by 30%. It's just an absolute busted uh, main skill. It's it's so loaded. It does so much stuff, right? And then sub skill 320% damage to three enemy targets, and also 40% uh, chance to inflict uh, sleep, right? So you also get that crowd control with your sub skill. It hits one more target, and it's an it's not that great of a multiplier, but you know it's 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 not bad for what it does, right? So there's that as well. Also increases all allies block rate by twenty percent. So again, no pumpkin, absolutely just crazy. High Andromon, High Andromon got a bit of an increase in in terms of your ranking, right? Um, and also increase in usage rate as well. So again, a High Andromon, you're mainly using it for the defensive boost on on the sub skill. Also increases all allies counter rate by twenty percent to I guess counter <laughs> the the Minerva Mons uh, main skill right that that decreases um, all all enemies counter rate by twenty percent so that kind of nullifies it if you have high Andromon on your team and also you know just general in general increases your team's counter rate if you're not facing Minerva Mon and then you also have the main skill with a like the multiplier does not matter on high Andromon dude has like no base power <laughs> dude's base power is a joke. So you're not going to do damage with this, but you are hitting all uh, enemies with a 40% chance to inflict shock on all enemy targets and increases all allies block rates by 30%. So again, this is incredibly strong um, High Andromon, right? So I I'm actually surprised that High Andromon isn't higher. I personally would have thought High Andromon probably would be at number one just because like, no matter what team you're running, if you're running a tech team, running a power team, you can always throw High Andromon in there, right? <laughs> Since it's not really restricted to... Uh, a certain type of team you could you could always throw it in there if you're running power you could use high Andromon obviously and even if you're attack you're not using high high Andromon to attack anyway so you could throw high Andromon in there get that shield up 
stun you know uh counter block all that stuff so <laughs> yeah um it would make sense that hydromon's all the way up here i would expect hydromon to keep on uh surging right in usage rage just because you know it's so you know it's so incredibly strong right so here's the big one uh this week uh creepymon creepymon went from i think it was like number seven or something all the way up to number four from like 20 percent around 20% usage rate to, to, you know, basically doubling that usage rate to 43%. Not because Creepymon, you know, wasn't good the season before. Just because, you know, uh, the season before, Creepymon just barely came out and folks haven't really pulled Creepymon yet. And now more and more people are pulling Creepymon. Creepymon, more and more people are leveling him up, um, you know, throwing plugins on him. That's probably why Creepymon <laughs> rose all the way up here, right? Again, for those of you who don't know what Creepmon does, huge multiplier on, on your main skill to two enemy targets, and, you know, uh, it has a, uh, you know, a HP uh, restoration um, that's continuously restoring a 500 HP. Also, 55% chance to inflict burn on two enemy targets, so incredibly, <laughs> incredibly strong main skill. And then sub-skill is a taunt, and also increases own counter rate by 70%. So if you give it enough uh, good plugins, you could increase that uh, increase that all the way to 100%. And of course, Minermon could still decrease that, but if you have like High Endermon or something you, to increase all allies' counter rate as well, you know, you could you kind of combat that as well, right? So, Creepymon plus Ironmon is a very, very deadly combo. Um, passive skill, of course, nullifies uh, poison, burn, air effects, targeting deft allies, which is really, really strong, right? Poison is a big one. Um, with with Minermon still running around, burn is a big one. With uh, Creepymon around, um, Boltmon, people are still using Boltmon. Air is not really that good, big of a deal at the moment. Uh, and also increases own power 15% per attack received, right? And with that taunt, you're going to get hit more, going to increase your damage more, and then huge, huge main skill, right? So <laughs> Creepymon, really, really strong, obviously. Creepymon is probably the strongest of all these uh, at the moment. But again, Creepymon only have been on one banner. People, not everyone has pulled Creepymon. That's why Creepymon isn't higher. Although, again, the top three are really, really strong as well. So it could just be, <laughs> you know, it's just throwing around. It's just lying there. But... After Creepymon, I honestly think, in my opinion, again, and this is this isn't what uh, the data tells us because obviously there there are just uh, you know um, this is my opinion, right? And it's data tells us is not true. But um, after this would be kind of a drop off. These top four, these top four are kind of you know um, as, as in similar uh, similar terms in terms of uh, strength, and then and then you have a drop off when it comes to War Greymon, right? So War Greymon again. It's much better in clash battles than it would be in battle park, just because it's just both its skills are single target. Again, huge, huge multipliers on these skills, but it's just not as strong, right? Um, even you know, uh, Terra Force, you got that crowd control as well, right? And then you decrease power. That's all good, but I think mainly the reason why people are still run running War Greymon is first of all. It was uh, on the step up. It was guaranteed. Everyone has War Greymon, right? And also, its first passive skill, honestly, to nullify blind, since blind is much more prominent now, now that people are running Piedmon more. Piedmon, both its skills have blind, and blind is really, really annoying. So, War Greymon obviously help, helps with that. So, um, War Greymon did, uh, oh, actually, War Greymon did not drop any places. So, it's still number five. That's interesting. Uh, slightly dropped in usage rate. But uh, still, uh, in its uh, you know same place, so I guess there there are the two sides to it. The one side where you know there's better PVP di uh, uh, Digimon out right now, so with AOE skills. But the other side is you know Piedmon is everywhere. I wouldn't say everywhere, but you know a huge increase in usage rate right for Piedmon, um, seventeen percent boost there. So uh, there would be people running Wargreymon to nullify the the blind right. So that would make sense. So Qmon probably took the biggest dip here of, of all these on the list. Let me see. Um, yeah, yeah. So Qmon took the, one of the biggest dips. And it's not for, you know, a, without no reason. Um, so Qmon is still decent. I mean, uh, she just does, like, absolute zero damage. <laughs> like, her moves are good, right? Her main skill... 40% um, chance to skill lock all enemy targets for two turns. Decrease all enemy targets attack by 30%. All right, that's that's all good. And her sub skill uh, decrease all targets enemy defense by 20%. This you know this is all great. Um, but do keep in mind that Minervamon 
just has a Minerva Mon's passive is just basically her sub skill. Except it doesn't do any damage, but it doesn't matter because Sekumon does no damage. <laughs> so this is the biggest problem with Sekumon. Sekumon gets absolutely replaced by, easily replaced by Minerva Mon. Even, you know, and the main skill, it's only 40% chance of skill lock, which is still decent. But then again, you got, you know, you got better stuff to run. Um, even if you do want to just run a Digimon for skill lock, you got, you got stuff like um, a Magna Angemon, which could still lock, a skill lock as well, but, but also a heal, right? So uh, that's the problem with 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 Zekumon, Although I would say Zekumon is just slightly all around uh, better, just because you know a Magna Angemon super slow and, and all that, you know. Uh, but but still, just not as good as it was, you know, say a week or two weeks ago. So um, unfortunately, Zekumon is going to drop, and she's probably going to keep on dropping until she probably drops out of this <laughs> poll, which is unfortunate for Zekumon users. But uh, yeah, um. She, it just she just doesn't do uh, at the moment like this meta is uh, fast and high damage right you want to uh, you want to you know be as fast as you can just dish out as much damage as you can no pumpkin mon plus nerve mon huge damage creepy mon huge damage right so skewmon unfortunately um not in a really good spot at the moment moving on pinemon pinemon increased uh, a, a lot in, in its um usage rate most because, well, more people got Piedmon, <laughs> obviously, but, you know, also Piedmon um, got much more better with War Greymon dropping, right? Especially in, in higher um, uh, uh, higher rankings, right? Let, you see less people running War Greymon than more people use Piedmon, and obviously Piedmon is pretty strong. Um, the, uh, Piedmon's main skill deals a lot of damage against two enemy targets, and Pinpoint rate is also really, really decent for that as well. And then also blind, uh, obviously, on both skills. So there's that as well. And just the meta is last week. Uh, I, I would say the meta last week was more, is much more, it was much more uh, leaning tech over power, right? You know, Minerva Mon, Noble Pumpkin, Piedmon, Mega Gargamon, right? A lot of these really, really strong uh, tech units have been um, kind of... Uh, I, I, I guess the main core of teams that you've been facing, but I also do think that tech are slightly in decline, and 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 you know we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit after we talk about Mega Gargamon. So next one's Mega Gargamon. The reason why Mega Gargamon, it, I I I personally predicted. I thought Mega Gargamon would see an increase just because you know more people getting into mess, uh, s rank and then more people will be uh you know getting more mega gargamon but apparently not <laughs> uh so that's that's an l on me i personally thought it would would have increased but it didn't but again mega, mega gargamon's really really strong um i guess biggest problem with him is just doesn't do too much damage by himself which i guess isn't the biggest deal in the world just because you know mega gargamon just does so much more uh, decrease your enemy's power and also decreases your enemy's text you know so no matter what you're facing it's just going to make your team more tankier right and then it also it you know does or or not uh, it it inc uh, decreases your te uh, enemy's tech res uh, tech damage resistance um the the both uh decrease enemies uh power and tech i think that was gankumon i got those those two mixed up but um yeah mega gargamon decreases uh, your opponent's power and then also tech damage resistance which um, well, I, I can kind of see why people aren't running Mega Gargamon as much, just because uh, if you are going, you know, the main skill decreasing enemies' targets' power by thirty percent, you already have that with uh, Noble Pokemon, and it's just much more, it's it's just much better, I guess. Um, just because you know it, it increases your allies' power resistance um, in, in comparison. Although again, it's different, but uh, and, and this one is only against four enemy targets. Well. Um, well, well, no, Pokemon is all your allies. You know, you're you're, you're covering one more person over there, right? Um, but the sub skill is really, really good. Um, decreases enemies' tech damage resistance by thirty percent. If you're running a full tech team, or near full tech team, Mar Mega Gargamon is just, just just gonna increase your whole uh, team's uh, damage uh, a lot, right? So there's always that, and also, you know, has that passive skill helping calm allies as well. So, uh, moving on. Uh, so, actually, but before we move on, let's let's talk about a lot of these power um, teams that I personally see we might have a you know a brief resurgent of of power teams, just because a lot of people are getting Gankumon right now, which is pretty decent, right? 
Um, such a huge multiplier, single uh, target uh, move. But you know that's not the main sell point of this. You know it ignores enemy block, and it increases all allies' tech damage resistance by thirty percent. So that's obviously gonna you know hurt your um tech teams a, a lot. You know it's thirty percent damage reduction for you, right? And then um, also nullifies. Uh, shock paralysis, free stun, sleep, um, targeting himself. All allies' block rate increases by thirty percent, which is that's that's a decent amount, right? And then you also have uh, the sub skill, which is um, increases allies' power resistance by thirty percent as well. So Gankumon is is a really decent uh, power um, power Digimon that that you probably want to throw on your team now that more and more people are are getting him right in, in the shops. So. Uh, you would see more more um, folks running power teams with Gankumon, but the biggest sell point for power teams are obviously still Creepymon because again, Creepymon is so incredibly powerful. Uh, dude came on global months earlier than he probably should have, so that's why people are running uh, more power uh, teams than than they were. Uh, say at the beginning of last season um, because I think at the beginning and even at the middle of last season there were a lot of tech teams running around and now there are more hybrid teams with throwing in Creepymon, sometimes throwing Gankumon, right? And there's some people still run Boltmon, right? So that's that's an interesting dynamic. Boltmon, slight drop. Um, I guess it makes sense. There's just, you know, Creepymon's just better <laughs> um, for, for, for the most part. And it's, you know, um, it is what it is. Uh, Boltmon's still decent, but uh, it's got better options right uh, out there. And then as for Wisemon, and if we can find a Lilimon, and this is, I guess, the biggest indicator of the meta. Wisemon's at 15%, while Lilimon is only at 4%. So Wisemon, for those of you who don't know, is the tech buffer. It buffs all, you know, allies uh, tech damage by 80% when at, you know, at, at skill level max. So a lot of people are running Wisemon. And not as much people running Lilimon, but you do see the Lilimon in a slight increase in usage rate, which, you know, is what I guess I was talking about over there. And you do see a slight decrease in Wisemon's usage rate. So I would say, again, this meta, probably there would be more people running power than before um, as we start this season, at least at the start of this season, right? And uh, I'll, I'll, I won't go over every single one over here, but I'll just go over some notable ones. Uh, Ravemon, huge drop, obviously, because, you know, pe more people have Piedmon. Piedmon just a better Ravemon. Pretty simple. That's why Ravemon's dropping. Uh, Pleasemon, uh, there's nothing really too much to talk about Pleasemon. Pleasemon, it, we're just in a speed meta, and Pleasemon, you know, you know the speed doesn't really help, right? Pumpkinmon, this this thing is absolutely, this is really, really good, especially that y you could, you know, farm it to a free-to-play skill level 10. I don't think anyone could actually get that yet, just because it, eggs take, like, so long to hatch. But if you do, do get a uh, level 10 uh, skill level Pumpkinmon, it's going to be it, really, really strong, especially with the special rainbow plugins for Pumpkinmon as well. Right, so you're inflicting stun, and sub skill also decreases enemy uh, attack by thirty percent, right? And then increases block rate of brave allies by twenty percent as well. So even though brave allies or or, or brave Digimon aren't really that uh, great in the meta at the moment, I would say at the meta uh, you, your biggest ones are will be deft, uh, calm, and maybe tenacious, and then brave, right? For the most part. But uh, it, it is what it is. Um, Venom, nothing much to talk about. Venom, it is what it is. Huge power. Uh, damage dealer, glass cannon, can't take a hit. Um, Puppet Mom, Mammy Mom, Mammy Mom, just you know, for those who don't have high Angemon. Um, Ebimon, you would see that drop as well, you know, since you know, Sakumon is also dropping, so that makes sense. Poor Mega Guru Metal Gurumon <laughs> dropped all the way down here. Um, what can I say? It's just not that great. <laughs> um, Puppet Mon, uh, more people pull Puppet Mon, so it makes sense that they're going up again. Same with Metal Seedramon. And, uh, oh, Machine Dramon, actually, we do see a slight decrease over there. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> and then, obviously, you got the new ones in here. Rosemon, Shine Greymon, Garudamon, I did not expect seeing. I do not um, know why Garudamon. I mean, Garudamon, I guess, is it's a decent AoE de damage dealer. Um, it's kind of like a Boltmon-ish kind of Digimon that you're running, right? But, uh, I don't know. It's okay. It's okay for an ultimate, right? Um, so that's interesting. Um, some some things that you know do do stand out is uh, Air Vijamon is completely gone. <laughs> Air Vijamon, everyone's you know free to play. Trump card is just out out of the uh, out of the trending um, Digimon line, which is kind of sad because I personally do like Air Vijamon. But uh, what can you do?
not in here anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that's about it. Um, you know, last week's meta, I guess. Uh, again, you know, the, the meta changes uh, a lot actually from day to day. Um, I would say, pers I would personally characterize characterize last week's meta. You know, it's it starts off with a really really strong you know Minerva core team. And then it moved on to like a more full on tech team with people incorporating Piedmon into into their team. Um, and also, uh, you know, when I talk about the Minerva team, obviously Noble Pumpkin plus Minerva people, there's only a two percent difference in these two rates, right? Um, sixty five percent for Minerva, sixty three percent for Noble Pumpkin. So most people will be running Minerva and Pu Noble Pumpkin on the same team, right? And then and then you know during I. I guess middle of the week it became more of a you know full on tech team with Minerva, Noble Pum Pumpkin, people running Piedmon, people uh, running uh, Mega Gargomon, and stuff. And then uh, at the I guess more uh, and then also people throwing in a Creepymon right as well. And then at the end of the week it it sort of became a bit different again with people dropping um, Piedmon right, people dropping Mega Gargomon. Um, picking up Creepymon, picking up a uh, Gankumon, right as well. So I guess that's how how the meta was last week. So, anyways, um, should be interesting to see how it shapes up this week. Um, we are well, people. I wouldn't say we are, but people are speculating that we might get Rusty or or uh, or Mirage soon. So we'll see how that shakes up the meta. Although I don't really. Th think well if mirage drops won't shake up the meta too much i haven't really looked too much into rusty yet so who knows so anyways uh that's me for this one hope you guys enjoyed it um hope you all got a decent standing in your uh last season by the way if you could see my bp is down to 33 which means i did actually go exchange for gankumon's egg which is incubating at the moment well will take me a while to actually incubate. you know one more hour for this cycle it it'll take me a few days to actually get this thing out so uh that should be fun um i did get did end up in top 1000 i used i think one or t i think it was two stamina refills at the end just to get you know i mean it's only what 10 digi rubies for an extra 50 so it's a net gain of 40 digi rubies right <laughs> it also makes me feel a bit better because it's top 1000 <laughs> no. okay uh jokes aside um i hope you all did well in last season and should be interesting how this season plays out uh, especially with the changes that's been happening um that you know people are kind of phasing out some tech digimons and then again creepymon people might start building a bit more around creepymon which should be interesting so anyways again let me know what you guys think in the comments down below like and enjoy this video subscribe to your channel for some more digimon rerise content and i'll see you guys in the next one